everyone, welcome back to One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. I am back again today with another set guide and review, and this time it is for 2022 Topps Heritage. Celebrating the 1973 design of Topps, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about Topps Heritage before you buy into the product. So sit back and it's time to start the One Cent Sports Cards 2022 Topps Heritage set guide and review. So it's been a busy release week for Topps. We had opening day drop yesterday and tomorrow we have 2022 Topps Heritage dropping. And what we're going to do in this set guide and review today is find out how good Topps Heritage really is. We do that by using the exclusive one cent sensational set ranking. It's the most in-depth ranking you're going to find anywhere on the internet. But before we get there, Here's what we're going to cover off on today. We're going to start with the 10,000 foot view, cover off on what the set highlights are, we dig a little bit deeper, go into the different buying formats. There's tons of them for 2022. Then we'll show you what all the key rookies and all the key cards we're going to be chasing in this set are, cover off on all the parallels, the inserts, relics, and autos, tons of them that Topps Heritage offers. And then I'm even going to tell you which teams I would recommend getting in a break. I'll even give you a break cheat sheet, which will show you all 30 teams and how good they are and if you should or should not be getting them in a pick your team break. And that's what will bring us to our one cent sensational set ranking where we'll find out how good Topps Heritage really is. And we'll end today by showing you all of the set rankings from 2022 to date to see how it's stacking up against the other sets that have been released this season. So one more thing before we begin. If you like these set guides and reviews, be sure to throw over to first, hit that like button for me. It's the best way you can support the channel. And if you like the reviews and want to see all of the ones that we do in the 2022 season, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you want to see them first, you got to hit the bell notification. Finally, if you like what we're doing on the channel, be sure to check out my Patreon page. There's a link in the description below. That will give you exclusive access to my breaks. That will give you exclusive access to my Discord community. And it's a great resource for anyone that is into collecting baseball cards in 2022. So let's dig right in. Topps Heritage, here's the set highlights. Very first thing you're gonna wanna know is it is a long running nostalgia infused set. And this year it's celebrating the 1973 Topps design. There are 500 cards in the base set checklist and numbers 401 through 500 are considered high number short prints. Heritage is in its 22nd year of production, started way back in 2001. And like I said, per usual, Heritage always celebrates a top, uh, Topps design from the past. And this year, we're celebrating the 1973 design. There are only two base color parallels, not a big parallel set, but there are six chrome parallels that you can pull of 100 cards that have been selected in the set. The th reason we don't have a lot of parallels is because this set uses a lot of variations and purposeful errors. They play a huge part in the set. There are six different varieties of errors and variations that you can find in this year's set. It is widely available in hobby formats and retail formats. We'll cover off on what all those are in just a second. And relics are also a big, big focus on this set. There's eight different relic options for 2022. And coming back again, we're going to celebrate some of the iconic news from 1973 and the news flashback inserts that have been in Heritage for quite a while. Box toppers are going to be available in hobby boxes and the real one autos. That's the big autos that you can pull out of this set. They are considered to be some of the best autos you can pull from any sets that Topps releases in the baseball card season. This is widely known as a set collector set. It's a big 500 card set, tough to complete because of the high number short prints. But if you're a set collector, this is definitely a set for you. 
And one more thing, hot boxes are available. That's gonna have purple refractors. You can get hot box blasters and you can get hot box hobby boxes. So those are coming back again for 2022. So what are the different buying formats? Well, for hobby, we've got a hobby case that's gonna have 12 boxes per case, 24 packs per box, nine cards per pack. That'll get you 2,592 total cards and the current price on those running about 1,300 bucks. So your cost per card sitting at 50 cents, you're guaranteed to get 12 autos or relics, 12 box loaders and 96 base short prints. If you drop down to the hobby box, that's gonna give you 24 packs in a box, nine cards per pack. So 216 total cards, cost you about 110 bucks. That's the current online prices. So your cost per card creeps up to 51 cents. You're gonna get one Ottawa relic, one box topper, and eight base short prints guaranteed. But we can also find this in retail. First, we'll start with the retail box. That's got 24 packs per box, nine cards per pack, 216 total cards, $85 is gonna be your current price online. Cost per card goes down to 39 cents. Nothing guaranteed in those, but you'll probably get a few short prints and maybe get lucky, get an auto or a relic. You can also get a blaster box. That's gonna be eight packs per box, nine cards per pack, so 72 total cards cost you 20 bucks and the cost per card will be 28 cents and the big thing in the blasters is it is possible to get a hot box then you've got the hanger box 35 cards in a box so 35 total cards cost you about 11 bucks cost per card 31 cents and we have the fat pack that's going to have 20 cards per pack 20 total cards cost you around six bucks and your cost per card at 30 cents then there's the mega boxes these aren't confirmed however they did have them last year and they were unique to target and walmart so the target one last year had 17 packs in a box nine cards per pack and there were three red parallels that were guaranteed in there so 156 total cards and they cost 40 bucks the cost per card on that was 26 cents and you were guaranteed to get three red border parallels Walmart was a little bit of a different setup. That only had 15 packs, so nine cards per pack, but it did have three blue sparkle chrome parallels. So you got 138 total cards in that. The cost was 40 bucks. Your cost per card was 30 cents, but you did get the three blue sparkle chrome parallels. One more thing to consider, there will be individual gravity feed packs available of all of these. And it's likely that you could see some different formats based upon the retail location you're in. So our key cards, what are we chasing in Topps Heritage this year? First, let's cover off on the rookies. A big, big rookie checklist for Heritage this year. We've got Lars Newbar, my favorite name in the hobby right now. Seth Beer, Yoni Hernandez, who I don't believe was in Series 1, so he's making his first appearance here. Vidal Brujan, Ryan Valade, Nick Fortes gets his first rookie card here in Topps. Uh, heritage and the big one O'Neill Cruz who was a big omission from series one does get his first rookie card here in heritage Shane Baz same thing Romy Gonzalez is also available Brandon Marsh Jaron Duran Colton Welker gets his first tops rookie card in heritage Josh Lowe as well getting his first card and of course we've got Wander Franco and Hans Kraus gets his first card in Topps Heritage as well. For our parallels, autos, inserts, relics, all that stuff, the cards we're going to be chasing, obviously the high number short prints, those are cards number 401 through 500. The chrome parallels, which you're going to find throughout a lot of these packs, and not too tough to find, but very cool cards if you can get them. And the error variations, those are tough pulls, but always command a high dollar on the secondary market. And the action image variations, those have returned again in 2022, very popular, especially for the rookies that you can pull out of there. The nickname variations return, and the ultra rare throwback, some of the most valuable cards you can pull out of Topps Heritage, going to be these throwback uniform variations, tough pulls, but they are extremely valuable on the secondary market. 
Then we have some cut signatures. We've got some celebrities that were popular from 73, and we've got baseball cut signatures. Those are all one of one hits, huge hits if you can get them. And the always popular real one autographs are also gonna be a nice chase. The Clubhouse Collection Auto Relics, that's gonna be patch autos. Those are always fun to hit. And of course, for our inserts, we've got that news flashback insert, fun insert set from Heritage celebrating the 1973 current events. And there are the base mini cards as well. Another variation that you can pull out of Topps Heritage and the very cool 1973 mint relics. Those actually have coins from 1973 with a baseball player beside them. Very cool little relic that you can get out of Topps Heritage. So what are our different parallels? Like I said, it's not a big parallel set, but they do exist, so let's cover off on them. First, we've got our base parallels. We've got the red base from Target. That's unconfirmed, but they had them last year, assuming they're going to bring them back in the Mega Boxes this year. And for Hobby, there is the base black variation. There's 50 copies of those. And the flip stock there's five copies of each of those. That's basically just the stock of the paper is flipped. So the cardboard side is on the front and the more glossy side is on the back. Then we also have our chrome base parallels. Now there's only 100 in that set, but the different parallels in that breakdown, you're gonna have the hot box refractors available in Hobby and Blasters. You've got the blue sparkle from Walmart, assuming that's coming back. Then you've got the refractors numbered to 573, the silvers numbered to 373, the blacks to 73, the gold numbered to five, which you're only gonna find in hobby, and super fractor one of ones. So like I said, not a lot of parallels, but that's because we do a ton of variations. So what are the different variations? Well, you can get an error variation, which is a purposeful error that is put on the card. There's going to be five cards that you can get from that. There's the image variations, which are only available in the hobby format. There's 25 different action image variations in 2022 Heritage. And the mini base variations, 130 cards there, and there are only 100 copies each of those. So a fairly tough pull to find some of those, but fun if you can get them. And the nickname variations, which just gives the nickname of the player that's shown on the card. There's 10 cards in that variation subset. And there's the player icon swap. If you look over at Anthony Rizzo, that little icon gets swapped out. 12 cards in that set. And the team and name color swap variations. Again, if we look at our Anthony Rizzo card to the right, the color of the name and the team name will get swapped out. And the throwback uniform variations. This is an ultra rare hit if you can get it. Basically shows the player in a throwback uniform. 15 cards in that subset. So what are the different inserts? Let's cover off on those. Plenty of them that they're going to have in Topps Heritage this year. We'll start with the 1973 Topps Candy Lids. Those have been around off and on throughout the years. So basically a little circular candy lid, 25 cards in that insert set. And we've got 1973 Topps Comics, 25 cards in that set as well. We've got the 1973 Topps Pinups Box Loaders. Those are going to be posters. There's 25 cards in that subset. I believe some of those can actually be autographed as well. You'll find those in one of two hobby boxes. And we have for retail the 1973 Topps Venezuela Stamps. You can see what that looks like over on the right with the Roberto Clemente. Very cool design this year. 25 cards in that insert set. And the Baseball Flashbacks, 15 cards in that set. New Age Performers returns again for 2022, 25 cards in that insert set. And the News Flashbacks, 15 cards there. And the Oversized 1973, 50 cards in that set. There is only 1,000 copies of each of those, and you're only going to find them in Hobby. That's your other box loader that you can get from Topps Heritage. Finally, we have the then and now returning again, and there's 15 cards in that insert set as well. So what are our different relics? 
Well, we've got the 1973 Mint Relics. Those are the ones with the coins, only available in Hobby. 50 cards in that subset. And you can see the different versions. We've got nickels, dimes, quarters, and half dollars. Half dollars numbered to one of one. We have the 1973 U.S. Postal Stamp Relics. That's going to have a stamp. There's 20 cards in that subset, and they're each numbered to 50. The Clubhouse Collection Relics. This is what you're going to find in most average boxes. There's 93 different cards for the Clubhouse Collection Relics this year, and there are some parallels, a gold to 99 and a patch one of one. And we also have the Clubhouse Collection in a dual relic form, 10 cards in that subset, and the Quad Relics numbered to 10 each, 10 cards in that subset, and the Triple Relic, which you can see over on the right, those are going to be numbered to 25 each, and there's 10 cards in that subset as well. For our autographs, not a big autograph driven set but some of the autographs are worth a lot of money on the secondary market they're virtually all on card so we've got the 1973 baseball cut signatures there's nine different cut signatures you can get this year and of course those are going to be one of ones and there's the celebrity cut signatures so those will be celebrities that uh, were big in 1973 uh, you've got 10 cards in that subset of course they're all going to be numbered one of one then the big autographs, you've got the real one autographs, very popular autographs on the secondary market, some of the most popular autographs that Topps releases every year. There's 71 different cards you can get there, and there is the red ink parallel, which is always popular. Those are going to be numbered to 73. There's also the real one dual autographs, only four cards available there. They're each numbered to 25 or less and only available in hobby boxes. Same thing with the triple autographs. They're each numbered to five or less, only three cards in that set, again, only available in hobby. For our autographed relics, we have the Clubhouse Collection autographed relic. You can see what that looks like with the Mike Trout to the right, nine cards in that subset, each numbered to 25 with a patch one of one parallel. And there's the dual autographed relics, only available on Hobby, three cards in that set, each number to 10 or less, very tough pull right there. And the flashback autographed relics, 11 cards in that autograph set with a patch one of one parallel. So with all of that being said, that's basically everything we can get out of Topps Heritage. The question becomes, hey, I wanna buy into a break. What teams are good? Well, I'm going to give you six teams right now that I would target in breaks. And my first one is going to be what I believe is the best team overall. And that's the Tampa Bay Rays. Now, obviously, I'm picking the Rays because they've got Wander Franco. However, in Heritage, it ups the ante even a little bit more. The Tampa Bay Rays have 19 base cards, four rookie cards, three short prints, five different chrome variations, 11 of the error variations, eight inserts, four autos, and five relics. Here's what you're chasing out of there though. Obviously the Wander Franco, but we have Shane Baz, we've got Bruhan and the Josh Lowe rookie cards as well. So a lot of those rookie cards weren't available and some of those names are big names in the Rays organizations and have been top prospects for a while. So definitely, definitely a lot of value in the Rays probably going to be the most expensive team again, but a very, very cool set that the Rays have in heritage in regards to the rookies that you can pull out of here. But if you're looking for the most autos, little bit of a surprise here. Look at the Cincinnati Reds. The Cincinnati Reds are a great team to get in a break. They will probably be in the top five most expensive in a pick your team but if you hit them in a random team it's money um, you've got 17 base cards three rookie cards four high number short prints three chrome cards seven variations seven inserts 12 autos and nine relics and the auto checklist is legit same with the relic checklist you've got johnny bench joey botto joe morgan you've got perez in there um just a ton of big Hall of Fame names that you can pull from the Cincinnati Reds. And keep in mind, it's heritage, so a lot of this stuff is going to be on card, which is fantastic. And it's just a very well-rounded team. The Cincinnati Reds, a little bit of a surprise here, but a very good team if you can get them and pick your team or random. If you're looking for the most rookie cards, 
I'm going to highlight the Pittsburgh Pirates, but there are four other teams that also have four rookie cards, but I'm picking the Pirates because of one reason, and that's going to be O'Neill Cruz. He gets his first Topps rookie here in Topps Heritage. That is a big name. A lot of people thought that got missed in Series 1, but he makes his first appearance here. Not a lot going on with the Pirates outside of the rookie chase. They've got 14 base, four rookie cards, three short prints, only two chromes, four variations, nine inserts, two autos, and four relics. So probably not going to be in the top 10 because there's not a lot you can get from the Pirates overall. But if you're chasing O'Neill Cruz, the Pirates are going to be a good, good team because I believe this will be the one time where it, the price of the Pirates won't be too high. If you can get them in a pick your team at the right price, you're doing great. If you get them in a random team break, a lot of people might try and trade uh, the Pirates away, but definitely try and look at the Pirates and try and keep them if you get them, and if you don't get them, might be a good team to trade for you if you get a kind of mid-level team in a, in a random team break. But the Pirates, I believe because of that O'Neill Cruz card, it may carry the day on Topps Heritage a little bit outside of Wander Franco. If you're looking for a solid choice, the Angels... Probably going to be an expensive team to buy into, but the Angels are loaded. The Angels have kind of been loaded all throughout the 2022 sets. A lot of that has to do with Otani. But you've got 16 base cards, two rookie cards, three short prints, five chromes, and 22 variations. More variations that you're going to find with the Angels than any other team in Topps Heritage 2022. 16 inserts, eight different autos. 11 different relics. So the Angels just loaded top to bottom. You've got Mike Trout autos, Otani autos. We've got Detmers getting some love in here with some autos and variations all throughout. The Angels are going to be a fantastic team. I would expect them to be one of the probably top three most expensive teams in pick your team breaks. If you hit them in a random team break, it's money. You're good to go. Don't trade them. Keep them. The Angels are going to be legit. They've got a ton of cards all throughout Heritage this year. But what are a couple sleepers? Kind of a surprise here as well. The Minnesota Twins. The Minnesota Twins, I don't even know if this is going to be a sleeper. They've also got 12 autos, just like the Cincinnati Reds. But I think because it's the Twins, you'll see some people kind of look over it a little bit if they haven't really studied what's available per team. So you might be able to get these if it drops out of like the top five or the top six and a pick your team break price rise. Definitely a nice team uh, to get. They've got 16 base cards, two rookie cards, four short prints, four chromes, six different variations, 11 inserts, that 12 autos, a nice number of relics at nine. And those autos aren't schleps either. You've got Rod Carew, you've got Oliva, you've got Jim Cat, uh, Josh Donaldson. So just some big names, more Hall of Famers again. So the Minnesota Twins, if you're looking for Hall of Fame on-card autos, definitely look at the Twins. A great sleeper team. If you can trade in a random team break, you're probably getting a steal. And a pick your team, if you can get them somewhere below the top five price-wise, it's money. So definitely the Twins going to be my first sleeper. My second sleeper for the third time already this year, the Philadelphia Phillies. They're kind of the sleeper team, I believe, in 2022. At least that's what's trending. You've got 15 base cards, two rookie cards, two short prints, three chrome, 10 variations, six inserts, six autos, and 11 relics. And again, we look at that auto checklist. You got Mike Schmidt, Steve Carlton, Bryce Harper auto, some big names right there. Has a decent amount of autos, decent amount of relics. You've got 10 different variations. They've got the amount of cards that you'd be looking for for a solid team. So if you could trade for the Phillies in a random team break, do it. If you can get them at the right price, again, I kind of say that they should be hovering right around like the 10th or 11th most expensive but you're getting a ton of cards out of here, and you've got a chance for some real bangers. So the Philadelphia Phillies, the Minnesota Twins, don't sleep on them. They're great teams in 2022 Topps Heritage. But what about all the other 24 teams? Well, I've broken down into three tiers kind of what I think the best teams are, the middle teams, and the teams you should maybe avoid. So let's start with the top tier. That top tier is going to be the Tampa Bay Rays, the Angels, the Reds, 
The White Sox have been a very good team in most early season 2022 sets. Same with Boston, same with Atlanta. And the Twins, who have been a bad team to get in opening day in Series 1, they're actually a fantastic team here. I'm putting them in the top tier. So these would be the teams that I believe are going to be kind of the most expensive and teams that if you get them in a random team break, just keep them. You're doing just fine with any of these teams little bit more of a gamble on our second tier teams here but this is where most of our teams are going to kind of fall not terrible teams if you get them not great you're going to have to maybe get some luck and hit an auto or a relic or two but some teams that i might highlight in here the philadelphia phillies again o'neill cruz with the pirates Nice little chase there. Not much beyond O'Neal Cruz, so you're taking a little bit of a gamble there. Padres are always good. The Nationals, surprisingly, are missing Juan Soto autos, but it's not a terrible team. St. Louis got a decent amount of cards in it as well. So these would be my second-tier teams. And finally, kind of our lower-tier teams, the teams that if you hit them in a random team break, it's you kind of struck out a little bit. A little disappointed to see that we have eight teams in here, but the teams I would avoid, surprisingly, the Seattle Mariners are down here, but just the Mariners are not offering a ton. The Rangers have been a bad team for baseball cards in 2022. They have not made it out of the bottom tier. Just not a lot offering there. Same with the Diamondbacks. The Indians, not a ton there as well. The Rockies, the Royals, and the Marlins and the Brewers kind of shape out our bottom tier. So would like to see some of these teams kind of move up into the second tier, but for as many good teams as we have, we've got about the same amount of bad teams and then everyone else is in between. So take a screenshot of this. Let me know how you think I can improve the break cheat sheet. And I hope that you guys have great luck on your breaks as you're buying into them for Tops Heritage. So with all that, that brings us to our one cent sensational set rating. So here's how this is going to work. It's time to find out how good Tops Heritage really is. Basically, the one cent sensational set ranking, it's the most in-depth uh, ranking system you're going to find anywhere on the internet. No one's doing it at this level but me. I break the set down into 10 categories. Each category is worth one to 10 points. Then we add up all of those points, and that's what gives us our final sensational set ranking score using the scale that you see down below. Then what we'll do, we'll compare the 2022 set with the past Tops Heritage sets from the last two years, see if the set's getting better or worse. Then we're going to compare Tops Heritage to all of the other sets that have been released in the young 2022 baseball card collecting season. So let's look at our categories. We've got 10 different ones, and our first one is going to be Appeal. I give Appeal a 7. Tops Heritage, because of the autos that you can pull out of here, the real one autos, and for set collectors is a very desirable set. However, it does not hold the same value that some of the bigger sets like uh, say Chrome or even flagship, some of the higher end sets. So the people that are kind of investing, some of those people tend to stay away from this and it's not as approachable as a set as say the flagship at only, what is it? 330 cards or something like that. So it's not quite as approachable because it's a big set. Some people think that it's a little bit more boring to open because there's a lot more commons. But keep in mind, it's a set collector set. I go ahead and give Appeal a 7. For the base checklist, I'm going to give it a 6. There's a few names that are kind of missing in here, but I love the fact that the rookies have been expanded a little bit for Topps Heritage compared to Series 1. So we've got all of the rookies from Series 1, plus a few more, O'Neill Cruz being one of those. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a 6. For the auto checklist, the auto checklist is really nice. Some big names, but there's also some big names missing. I mentioned earlier, Soto's not in there. I don't think you can get the Tatis auto this year, but... For Hall of Fame autos, for rookie autos, a lot of big superstars like Trout, Otani, there's a lot of big names and these autos do hold nice value on the secondary market. So I give it a 7.5. For our inserts, parallels, and variations, also getting a 7.5. A lot of different variations. That is a fun, fun part of this set. And it's not quite as approachable as a numbered parallel chrome variation, but with the air variations, it takes time to be with this set. You really got to look at the cards, the color swaps, nickname variations. Those are all things that as you look at this, 
it's kind of what drives the set. And then you've also got some very fun inserts for 2022. And of course, there is the parallels. And if you hit them, because there's not many of them, they're kind of nice pulls. So I go ahead and give it a 7.5. For our pack run and production odds, all the way down to a three. They make a ton of Tops Heritage. Not going to be quite as big a run as you'll see in Series 1, but it's going to be available everywhere. So a high print run. So your pack odds are going to come down a little bit, which has been kind of the story of 2022. Production runs are way up. So I give it a three. For the card quality, it's a standard vintage style card, standard cardboard that you grew up with, very nostalgic here. I go ahead and put it middle of the road. It's kind of a five, so not much going on with the card quality here. For historical value, Heritage does not hold the same value as some of the bigger, more valuable sets. Like I said, Chrome, Flagship, sets like that. But there is some value that you can find here, especially in the real one autos and some of like, like the throwback uniforms hold a ton of value on the secondary market. So you can find it. The pack odds are a little bit long. So I'm going to go ahead and give historical value a four. The cost value, which means what are we getting if I buy a hobby box, if I buy a blaster, how much value am I getting back? I'm going to go ahead and give it a five. Some of the hobby boxes are going to be duds and you may get kind of a common relic and you're not going to get your 110 bucks back or whatever you buy a box for. But if you hit one of the real one autos, those are always real nice. If you hit some of the variations, some of these can be huge. So there is some value there. It's kind of middle of the road. So I go ahead and give cost value the five for the artistic value. I love the 1973 design. It's a very clean design. One of the more popular designs in Topps history. And then when we look at some of the relics with the coins and the stamps, and then we look at the inserts and some of the new inserts that we have for 2022 and some of the tried and true ones like the new performers. Artistically, I think it's a very nice set. I go ahead and give it a 6.5. And finally, for collectability, this kind of speaks more towards the collectors and less towards the investors. This is a very collectible collector set. It is one of the most popular sets for set builders every year, year in and year out. It is popular for nostalgia collectors because of the 1973 design. And it's popular because of the real one autos and all of these different variations. We can get a very collectible set from an investor standpoint. You got to knock it off a little bit because it's just not one of the more valuable uh, high price sets. And that drives a lot of the hobby today. But overall, a very, very collectible set. You might find it a little bit boring to open on the surface, but when you start looking at the back of the cards and you really start searching for some of these subtle variations that you find, it becomes a set that you can get engrossed in really fast. And if you want a really nice challenge, try and complete the whole 500 card set. Those high number short prints between 401 and 500, that will give you a great challenge. It takes a while to complete the set. It's a fun set to be with. So where does Topps Heritage land on the one cent sensational set ranking? We're going to add up all those scores. And for 2022 Topps Heritage, we come in at a 59.5. Five. So an average, but very high on the average, almost a very good set. But we come in at a 59.5 for 2022. Like I said, not a set for everyone. Investors, maybe you want to steer clear or just buy singles. If you like ripping packs, if you like being a team set collector, this is going to have more cards from your team than most any other set that's getting released this year. There's a lot of stuff to enjoy about Topps Heritage. It's an average set, but it's a high average set. And in 2021, interestingly, Topps Heritage came in exactly at a 59.5 as well. So it's kind of stood pat here a little bit. And in 2020, it ranked a little bit lower. It came in at a 53. So as we can see, Topps Heritage has always kind of been an average set. There's, like I said, a lot to kind of unearth in these packs and to be with the packs. Not really a great set to just be ripping for hits. Definitely want to be with the cards, read the back of the cards, flip them over. You're going to find all sorts of fun stuff in Topps Heritage. So 59.5 average set. Where does 
Topps Heritage Land overall in our sets that have come out in 2022. Well, there hasn't been that many of them, so we've only had three sets, all from Topps so far. And Topps Heritage comes in as our second ranked set at 59.5. Topps Series 1 still leading the way. That got a 65. And Topps Opening Day, ranked as a poor set, but I think there's some things that, for certain people in the hobby, Topps Opening Day has some fun stuff that you can kind of rip. But Topps Heritage, guys, if you're a set collector, this is the set for you. Let me know in the comments below what you think about Topps heritage i try and respond to most of the comments that get posted in my comments section and as you're out there in the wild i hope that you have good luck finding this at the retail big box or over at your lcs and when you get those packs i hope you have good luck on your pack polls so with that guys thanks for watching i hope as you're ripping this stuff you have a good time with it and until next time take care of yourself take care of your family take care of your friends and take care of your neighbors. Have a good day.